There's nothing terribly hearts and flowers about a financial agreement, but in my view, couples who are either contemplating marriage, in a marriage, and in some circumstances approaching separation should consider having a binding financial agreement when there's a great disparity in wealth or if one, one or both spouses have been horribly skinned in a previous divorce or if they're part of a family business or have a large family property with other family members, or simply there's one particular asset or category of assets that each party wants to protect. The other types of couples who regularly enter into these types of agreements are people marrying for the second or sometimes the third or fourth time who have children from previous marriages and want to ensure that their descendants receive those assets. All types of couples in Australia can enter into financial agreements which are essentially contracts which will predetermine what will happen to a couple's assets when they separate. So that can be uh, suitable for couples who are thinking about moving in together as a de facto couple, who are already in a de facto relationship, who are engaged to be married, or who are already married. And then a different variety of financial agreement is also available to couples who have separated or divorced. And those two, the, the latter types of documents, are for effectively property settlements. But what people commonly understand to be financial agreements are prenuptial agreements between parties who are contemplating a relationship or in one.